Hello, welcome to another case of critical limb ischemia. This is a 59-year-old Caucasian female that presented to us with an unhealing ulcer involving the lateral aspect of the left heel. She has multiple risk factors, including hypertension, diabetes, chronic kidney disease. She has a remote history of smoking and stopped about 12 months ago. The ulcer distribution corresponds to the left perineal artery. The agnostic angiographic pictures that are going to be shown later shows an occluded SFA and popliteal arteries with an occluded posterior tibial artery. Uh, we're hoping to showcase today the aspirational atherectomy jet stream device, uh, followed by finishing the therapy with uh, drug balloon balloon angioplasty. We hope you enjoy this demonstration. Thank you. We usually start with retrograde column femoral artery uh, ultrasound guided access, as demonstrated here in this image, advancing the wire under ultrasound guidance. An angiogram of a sheath confirmed our position within the mid common femoral artery. Uh, in this case here, we're using a rim catheter with a glide advantage wire and doing selective angiography of the left lower extremity. The CTO, as you see, is just after the takeoff of the superficial femoral artery. A couple of challenges. There is an island of reconstitution in the middle of the vessel and then distal reconstitution beyond the adductor's canal within the proximal popliteal artery. After we cross, we confirmed our position and we obtained an angiographic map essentially uh, defining the degree of tibial disease. As you see here, there is an anterior tibial artery all the way to the dorsal spinous artery with a perineal artery and reconstitution of a distal posterior tibial artery via the posterior communicating artery. This is the NAF6 system that's being deployed uh, under fluoroscopic guidance. It's an independent embolic protection system device. Moving on to our atherectomy modality here, in this case, we chose aspirational atherectomy. Um, uh, as you notice, under ultrasound guidance, we're advancing the uh, Jetstream 2.1 device with the blades down. And this is the speed of advancing the crown. If you notice the operator, I'm choosing to move my device slowly. I am listening to the pitch of the device, so if you feel that this device is bogging down the term that we use, or essentially the RPMs of a device decreasing because of the device being overwhelmed with the amount of plaque or clot, you don't want to force the device. You want to wait and allow it to move slowly. In, in, in this clip here, we're speeding up a little bit uh, the, the jet stream, but essentially it's a device that you can watch under fluoroscopy, you can listen to the pitch change, um, and as, I sh as we showed you earlier, you can watch how the device performs even under ultrasound guidance. Uh, somebody, some, some people describe the wobbling effect of the jet stream. Essentially, after it traverses a CTO segment, it starts to, to, to move around, uh, uh, signifying that you are in a free space within the vessel. That's usually a good sign. Um, Always moving slow in a thoughtful and precise manner is very helpful, especially with the use of a jet stream device, um, and it will pay off eventually. Another tip with the use of a jet stream device is you have to be mindful of uh, your ACT, so pushing your ACT beyond 250 um, is worth it in some of these complex cases. This is an angiogram after uh, performing um, uh, aspirational atherectomy with the jet stream device. We're using a long 50 by 300 uh, ultraverse balloon. The balloon is inflated at four atmospheres. And uh, looked at the angiographic pictures. We see a type B dissection, not necessarily flow limiting. After performing sequential balloon angioplasty with the drug coated balloon, this was the final angiographic result. Looking at a type B dissection, not necessarily concerning, not flow limiting, with no significant gradient across the lesion interrogated the vascular tree all the way to the distal tibial vessels, all the way to the vascular uh, ulcer bed that corresponding to the perineal artery. Um, as you see here, the injection is being performed from the common femoral artery. There was no evidence of complications such as embolization or perforation. Uh, the pedal loop appears to be intact. And uh, what's interesting is, uh, uh, is uh, the calcaneal branch of the perineal artery um, is also uh, becoming more pronounced. As we're showing, these are the final angiographic pictures after performing aspirational atherectomy followed by drug-coated balloon angioplasty of the SFA popliteal artery. This concludes our presentation for uh, the utilization of aspirational atherectomy followed by drug-coated balloon angioplasty in this complex uh, CLI patients. Um, the patient was followed 
uh, at two weeks to evaluate for wound healing and at 30 days with an arterial duplex and ABIs. And we're happy to report that the patient wound has healed at six weeks post-procedure uh, and the patient has been doing very well. The current picture in front of you shows the wound of a patient. This is prior to intervention. The next image shows you the wound at six weeks post-intervention. You can see complete healing of a wound at that point. Also, you can see the images of arterial duplex and flow within the segment after treatment. This is part of our peripheral vascular follow-up protocol for those patients. So this way we can pick up patients that are not healing adequately or are not healing uh, within the speed that uh, we deem is necessary for some of those patients. Thank you for watching this presentation. We hope you enjoyed it.